Okay, for part B, we're going to follow the same procedure as A. We do have a fraction this time, but that's okay. We're still going to follow the same steps. Uh, so for this, the first thing we want to do is get all the like variables together. So I'm going to do x squared minus x. I'm going to leave a space for the complete the square steps. And then I have a plus y squared plus 2y. Again, I'm going to leave a space for that. And I'm going to put the 11 fourths over on the other side. So, these spaces that I have in here, this, they're going to be filled in with doing the complete the square step. So complete the square, again, has two steps. Step one is divide that number in front of the non-squared variable. Take that one, divide it by two, and then we're going to square it. If I take negative one, divide by two, I get negative one-half, and then I'm going to square it. If I square a negative one-half, I get a one-fourth. So I'm going to add a one-fourth here, but I'm also going to add a one-fourth after the equal sign. Always want to make sure you add the same number on both sides. That way you're not changing the problem, you're keeping the equation balanced. Next, I got a, a 2y that's here. That's a 2 in front. I'm going to divide that by 2. I get 1. Square that. I still get 1. So I have a plus 1 here. I'm also going to add the 1 over here, but instead of adding 1, I'm going to go ahead and turn it into a 4 over 4. Just automatically put it in common denominators, so that way I can add these easily because they all have the same denominator. Once you get done with this step, you've now created perfect squares, and perfect squares will factor into this. We have an x quantity squared and a y quantity squared, and then after the equal sign, we can add these together since they have common denominators. Now if I add that together, what I end up getting is 16 fourths which 16 over 4 is 4. So adding all that together, you'll just get a whole number. You'll get a 4 there. Now for the rest of it, the number that comes in front of the x, that's a 1. If I divided it by 2, I get 1 half. That's actually the number that will go into the parenthesis here. Step number 1 of your complete the square is what always goes inside that space. So negative 1 divided by 2 is negative 1 half. That's going to go in here. And this one, Step number one, I took the two, divided by two, and I got one. So that's a plus one, that's gonna go in there. So now I have something that is in the standard form, which means I can now find the center and the radius. So for the center, um, it's opposite sign of each of these. So opposite sign of negative one half is positive one half, and I get a positive, uh, Opposite sign of the positive one is negative one. So I get a positive one half and a negative one. Again, opposite sign of each of these is what goes in there for the center. The radius is always the square root of the number after the equal sign. That's going to be a two. So now that I have that, we're going to go to the graph. So the graph, we're first going to plot the center. Okay, so let me put some markings on here first. Okay, we need to go to 1 half and negative 1. So 1 half is going to go to here, and negative 1, that means it's going to be plotted uh, right there. Now the radius is 2, so from this point we're going to go up 2, down 2, left 2, and right 2. So from here we're going to go straight up 2, so 1, 2, it'll be right there. We're going to go down 2, it'll be right here. We're going to go to the left 2, so now we're at, we're at a half. So we're going to go over to 1, that's at that point, the halfway mark, and we're going to go over one more, it's going to end up right here. We're going to go over 2 from this spot to the right, 1 takes you over to here, and 2 takes you to this one. Okay. So now we have a circle that we're going to draw here, of course you should make sure it goes to the correct points there. Okay, mine looks a little oblong because of the way I scaling on it, but you'll have the actual grid on the test itself. So this would be your center radius and your final graph. 